What is up, YouTube? I'm introduced, and today I want to introduce you to how to make your own overlays like these that you then can use on your streams down in the bottom right here for your walls and overlays, for example. But you can also use it for different kind of games, but this is how you will do it. It's all for free. We just use DaVinci Resolve. If you follow along step by step, you will not only know how to do these, but you also understand how things work and then can just experiment with new things. So I hope that you enjoy it. If you don't want to know anything about this, just follow along step by step and you will get an awesome overlay, I promise. All right, let's dive right into DaVinci Resolve. Download it now. I have a link down below and then, yeah, we can get creating. All right. All right, we do most of it today in Fusion. But before we do that, we need to go to Media and make sure that you guys find a clip of yourself or someone else. In this case, I have got one of Joe Wo where you have down the bottom left here the self res symbol in case you want to mask it out and want to have an overlay where only these things are visible. Um, you will need to have a self res symbol to be able to mask it out. And also the money should be around like seven, ten thousand. 10,000. You usually don't have more than 100,000 unless you play Plunder and you want to have an overlay for that. Otherwise, you will have to guess that afterwards. So you need to find a clip of that because we will import that in a little bit. And then we go back to the master uh, do a right click and create a new fusion composition in the new fusion composition now we can determine how long our animation will be uh, it's always five seconds but i usually change it to 30 it depends what kind of animation you want to do um, 30 and then when you pl plug that into your streaming software you will just make it loop so it plays again and again and again um, and we're going to call that health bar tutorial OGP for original Pongo because we are doing one for him. It will be similar to Dracoda's, uh, but a little bit simplified for this uh, tutorial. So 30 seconds, health by OGP, create. It's now here. I think it is this one. It says OGP, okay. Then we're going to go <laughs> double click on it. And now we are in it. <laughs> All right, in here, we have our media out. And now we will just go over things that we will need to use for this tutorial. And that starts with, in the top corner, you see the spline. We know you're gonna use that as much, but we're gonna use this little viewer. So if you click on it, it looks like this at the beginning maybe. You can click on it and then you would have two viewers. If you click on it again, you will have a single viewer. So you can always decide between both viewers. I like to work with both because you will see in a little bit and on one side you can be really close on the other side a little bit further out and then it's easier to maneuver things around. Now we go and import our little overlay that I talked about before. Put that in. It's media in and then we connect these two. Poof. And now on the right hand side you will see our media out note display. This is, if we exported it right now, this is what we would export. On the left hand side, there's nothing, but I click on media in, press one, and now it's displayed on this side. So whatever you wanna have it displayed on, you press either one or two, this is one, and this would be two. And yeah, now we can start to work with it. What we need the most for this tutorial, this background node, we also need merge nodes, and we do need our masking tools. These are all here. So we mainly can work with these kind of things. If there's something different, I will show that to you for sure as well. Just so you understand, this is the most things that we need and then I will explain what they do when we get to it, okay? So let's start off with what we are actually going to do here. We wanna create an overlay for this part of the screen when you are streaming. So we will create a border and also background and cut out these little plates, the health bar, the money, and then also the self rest. This is what we're gonna cut out. You can extend it over to the side here. I just wanna have it very simple and easy. So does uh, original Pongo, cause he asked me to make it simple for him. And what we will do for that is we create a background. We will create masks to mask it out. And then we'll also create a text with his name, give it a little gradient and then also what we'll do is give it like a little bit of this like shimmering glinty thing. And lastly, we may create like a little lightning smoke effect as well. So this is all the things that we're going to do today. This will look a lot different at the end, but it will be easy because we go step by step and then it starts to make sense. Okay, right. Let's dive right into creating this little border with a backdrop in case you want to use a backdrop for yours. 
For that, we do need our background node. Click into nothing because we don't want it to affect anything. All right, here we have it. Uh, this is the background node. And then uh, we just press the one so that you guys see it is in here. If I now change the color of this, we're just gonna make it blue so that it's easier for us to see what I mean. This is blue, this is the background on the left-hand viewer. Uh, we can also turn the media pool off so that we see it a little bit better over here. And now we got these two things easier to maneuver. Background on the left-hand side and we want a mask. So we click on the rectangle mask and you already see when you have the background selected and click the rectangle mask, it already affects it. If we undo this, it doesn't affect the blue, but we will see the rectangle mask here. If I press one now, I have it selected, press one. Now you see the mask. It just shows you where the mask will be in the viewer. Black is not affected, white is affected. If we went over here and invert it, you see it's the other way around. Now if we connect these two again, and press press one, you see this is visible here. If we now select this and put it on the other square, a merge node is created. And now we see the media ouch on the right hand side and you see how this blue black background background is affecting this entire thing. Again, going on the rectangle, undo the invert and you see it affects everything here. Now. We need to uh, go to the next steps because we want to mask little things out of this, right? First, we need to put it into the right position. For that, I go into the background node and turn the alpha down a little bit. That makes it a little bit see-through, okay? Now we select the rectangle and bring the rectangle down to where we want to work. Let me go zoom in here a little bit. All right, this is what we want to work with. Now we just need to make this rectangle smaller so that it affects the spot that we actually want to work with, okay? So we just bring this here, make this a little wider, maybe like so, and then move it to where we want to have it. Uh, there we go. So if we zoom out now, this would be an overlay on top. Uh, it's just blue, nothing happened yet. And therefore, we now need to start masking things out, okay? We have our rectangle here. We click on the rectangle, click on another rectangle, and bring that in. Just try to put this little middle of it down here, like right on top of this thing. And now we can start making this smaller again. Make it smaller so that it's, you know, just affecting this plate box here. Plate box, this little rectangle plate spot make it a little bigger all right now we come to an important part of it the rectangle 2 is selected we need to go over to the right hand side here to the inspector and you see the paint mode the paint mode is set to merge if i select this and go to subtract it actually subtracts it from the rectangle that we had before and you can see there's a little hole here Okay, if we go to the background and make it all, you know, the alpha all the way up so it's not see-through at all, you see that we have a little cutout. Now, this is what we don't want to do with all of these things, and that's why we need to have the alpha again a little bit like that so that we can mask out things very well and also do the same thing with the health bar. One thing that we will do is we will copy-paste, copy-paste, and fit this all onto this, but I want to go over the things that you can also change here. For example, we have this rectangle selected and we just go a little closer. For example, the corner radius, you can round these things up a little bit, you know, make it round. Um, you can stretch it out. You can make it bigger, smaller. We need to use the stretch out for a little bit afterwards. Um, but what I will do actually, I will make it a little bit roundy. So we will round these a little bit because I know original Pongo likes them rounded. So make, give this a little bit uh, different look. And then we have it selected. We just hit Control C, copy it, and then Control V, paste. And then we can grab this and drag it over here because we just copy pasted it, put it here. And then 
you know? And same thing again, we just paste it on top and then we grab it and drag it all the way over here. We do that with all of them. Just with the last one, we're going to do it a little bit different. And now for this one, it's going to be completely different because we have the rectangle still selected here and we are going to go on the ellipse. And then an ellipse is created. If I zoom out, you see the ellipse here because it's set to merge. Merging means that they just work together. Now let's go and try to get it right into the center here. And then we make the circle way smaller. So then now we can work with it on this window. Kind of put it here and you already know paint mode. Go to subtract and boom, it's subtracted. Technically now if we go to the background, put the offer all the way up, boop, we see this would be an overlay or what the overlay would look like if that was what our intention was. We can also now change the background again to black and you see what it would look like in black. I think for this one, for example, we should also make a little corner radius here because you know all of these are rounded as well. One thing I don't like too much here is that you actually see the gray part here a little bit from the, from the game. So I would, I think, adjust this a little bit um, this just affects the first rectangle that we created. And the nice thing is I could move this around and you see the cutouts stay where they were. And this makes it really nice for like later adjustments and stuff. I don't want to see anything of this grayed out part. Um, so yeah, we can just, you know, adjust this to our liking. And that would be here. I personally, I think I would just tune down the curvature a little bit. Just make it like subtle. All right. And this is how we have our first thing set up that we have all the cutouts, etc. Now, however, if you want to make it pop a little bit more, we could, if the background is black, for example, you know, give it a little bit of a border. And for that, what we have to do is just pretty much copy all of this, copy, go into the side, click, paste, go in here, connect these two, make it merge. And the merge node is really easy to understand because the yellow parts is the background and the green arrow is whatever you put in front of it, right? Again, here you have over, so it is over on top. And therefore, whatever we do here now, let's change the background color here like to red. You see it changes to red because whatever we just created, we put over here gave it another background color, merged it, but it merges on top. Okay, so now we don't wanna have the entire thing red, we just wanna have the borders. So what we need to do here is tick where it says solid, tick that off, and then work with the border width and make give that a random number, maybe just one. You see it's really thin, but there's a little border. And now we do the same thing with these. One thing that we need to change though is from subtra subtract, subtract, go to add. It needs to add. Now you see it added it on top of the mask, but we need to undo the solid and again, give it a one. A one, a one. Well, and now you just do that with all of them to give them a little bit of a border, meaning you go on it, you go to add, untick the solid, and then give it a little bit of a border width. Like this. <laughs> All right, and now sometimes it doesn't really line up perfectly, so you can grab the masks and like try to adjust them a little bit. Remember, if you move that too far aside, it doesn't move the background layer. They are not connected. It doesn't move the background of the cutout. Uh, we didn't connect these. I just think it's a little simpler, um, but we can adjust these a little bit so that the white, for example, is nice and adjusted. And yeah, this is what this overlay would look like if you just made it really simple. And then you got the little cutouts here. You have the background that's black and then you have the outline as well. One thing, 
if you want to take it a step further, which we will do, you know, we do step by step by step. One thing that can help is if you click on these and hit F2, you can rename them. So this one would be rectangle um, border. And then I'll just write big so that I know it is the very big border. And hit OK. And then you go to the next, which would be here. F2. And we name it um, left plate. Hit OK. And if we do that with all of them, later on it will help us, depending on what we want to animate, to know, okay, this is the rectangle for this entire thing. And this would just be that rectangle. If you want to adjust the size, etc., you find it quicker than just reading rectangle two, 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 three, two, four. You know, this is not as easy to understand or read. So yeah, you can rename them by hitting F two, and then middle rec middle plate. All right, let's get into the animation a little bit. For that, we do need the the <clears throat> for that we do need the rectangle and just the border width. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here because we need just that one and then also what we can use is either this background um, so i'm going to copy this background and i'm going to put Control shift and paste and what this does it is an instance background that means whatever i change on this background it also affects the other background okay whatever i change on one of these it will change it for both of them um, you can change this back if you go on the instance here again on the instance you can right click and then you would go to de instance color group and that means if I de instance it and then change the color it just affects each single bit for what you de instanced. Um, this can be fairly handy sometimes. I did it now because if I change if in the animation on the outside I have like a certain color pattern, I may also want it to affect these things in the middle. Okay, so let's just say we connect these two again as an example and we put this on top. And now just, just to make the difference kind of clear, I will make this width a little bigger so that you see and we go into the background and for example, we don't want to have it a solid color. We want to give it a gradient Then we click on gradient, um, zoom out. This shows the gradient and I can grab it and bring it closer to our border and grab this as well and bring it closer to, and then we can click here and change the colors. Um, maybe we just give this just as an example. Okay, guys, this is red and this one on the side, we just get, uh, maybe maybe make it make it green, and you see because these are instances, it also affects the things in the background. Okay, I use that for my own overlay, where it turns a little bit, and you see the little things in the middle. They are affected as well. I thought it was kind of a nice touch, depending on what you want to do. This is really handy. Now, let's kind of undo this because we don't want to use this. I just wanted to show you how that would work and why instances can be handy, especially with backgrounds. Speaking of the animation on my overlay, you see a little glow that is pulsing and then a lightning goes around. And on Dracodus, you, for example, see like a fireball going around and then it, everything is burning. I will now show you with what function we kind of do this. I'm not going to go in depth of how exactly the fire works or the lightning goes, etc but I will show you what function does this and what you need to do this. And then you can play around a little bit yourself. We are going to do a little smoke effect here. It's similar to the fire one. Um, let's just let me show you. And then we do the fire one in a future tutorial. If you want to see this, how exactly the fireball moves and what does what, uh, I will show you that uh, very happily, but it would just be a little bit too much for this one. Okay. So now we have the outside here. This is the rectangle on the outside. We need to go shift and space shift and space bar brings this little select tool and in here we need to type displace we need the displace and add it all right we can unselect this or deselect put this here grab the little square and put it on the yellow 
and then connect this here again. And then we need our little fast noise. Hit fast noise and connect this on the green. Now you see it already moved a little bit. We have the fast noise on the view on the one. And now we see what the fast noise actually is. Okay, this is fast noise. And the fast noise affects the displacement and moves this around. So now we will see what happens to this image when we change the fast noise. We change the fast noise on the right hand side here. So when we up the contrast, for example, you see that it's changing already and the overlay changes too. We can up the detail and the scale. You see how it affects it already, like wobbles everywhere. And yeah, with this, you can play around a little bit. Um, you can also go into the displacement and change the offset a little bit so that it's not too offset and the refraction strength to see how much it how much it actually is affected okay as you see the fast noise is over this entire image but our little image is just what we want to have affected it's just in the bottom corner here so what i like to do for this one is i go here and add a transform node okay the transform node will just transform the fast noise meaning the fast noise is this big thing. And if I grab this transform node now and make it smaller, you see how this actually here gets smaller as well. If I now go on here and press one, there you see what it actually does to the fast noise. It made it way smaller. And now we can, let me make this bigger. You see it's not affected right now. If we have transform selected and grab this one here, and we move it down here, you see it affects just this area. And now we can go back to the fast noise and also, you know, scale it again. And then you see down the left, bottom left here, how it just uh, affects this little square there, like the scale. And then you kind of find the style that you want, maybe like this. I mean, like this, if you change the C, the rate, C, the C, the, I really don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is, how you pronounce it. But in this instance, if you change this, it will change the rate this works, like the fast noise moves. If I play now, you see already, it's like moving a little bit, slightly rotating around and you see it has like this little odd effect already. And now we come into the smokiness of it because at the end of the day, all it does is affect this rectangle on the outside, right? So now you can go back into the rectangle and play around with the rectangle. Maybe you want to have like softer edges and all of a sudden it looks very, very smoky. Ah, that is interesting. Or you make it really, really tiny and it starts looking like little lightning going around. Again, you can go back to the fast noise and then play around with it here as well to see what actually will make it look the most like lightning. You can go back to the displacement and also see what you can do here. Maybe make it to like zero point something so that it's not too strong. For that, actually, it would be helpful to turn this background off because otherwise it's also still visible. Okay, now we just have the the red line that we just created and see how that plays around. And this way now you can copy this and duplicate it and then change every variable a little bit and that's how you can get different kind of looks. For this one here, we now just go back to the rectangle and I think we're just gonna make it a little bit bigger because for Pongo, we're just going to give it like a little bit of a smoky kind of vibe and the displacement. I like it if it displays it a little bit more because for the smoke, it's nicer when it goes kind of everywhere like this. And I go back here and give it a little bit of a soft edge. Uh, see how soft we want it. All right, this is nice and smoky. I really like this actually. Maybe... <clears throat> I have like kind of an idea. I know that he wants it for this one. We want to maybe make it like a little bit more blue. So you do it like that. 
and now we connect this one again thing again that we can do now is turn off the background and all of its <clears throat> one thing that we can do now is turn off the background blackness and we can also turn off the little things going around depending on what kind of style you want for this we would go on this merge node and then turn off the blend mode and you see the black style is gone and then we can do the same thing here one thing that we would need to do for this though if we turn off this blend also the background white would go away so also the background white would go away so we need to copy this one more time copy this put it right next to it next to it and then <clears throat> Put it right next to it. Well, let me just delete it. Put it right next to it, kind of here. And then as well, copy the background one more time. Make an instance. Connect this with that. Create another merge. And then use the rectangle. Put it onto the background. And now we have it again, because we just took the rectangle and the background just to have this white overlay here. And yeah, with, with the other ones, like with this one here, we can see if we want to make the blue darker or not. You know, we can play around. We can duplicate things again. This is how we would make it darker. And just see how things are really visible or not. Now, <clears throat> now let's get to the one of the last things. Now let's get to the name that we still need to put in there. And then also this little white thing that goes over it. So we have two more things that need to be done for it to be kind of really cool to then after that start adjusting things uh, to our liking. And yeah, maybe we also change some of the glow and stuff, but this is just for, you know, afterwards, okay? All right, for the text, what we do, there's the text thing. We click on T, text plus. And now we have the text node here and we can change the text and a lot of stuff here as well. I may have to turn off my face cam, but we will see text. We can write original Pongo because it's original Pongo. And then um, I'm just going to press one so that we see what it looks like. I personally lately liked a lot the impact. So we go in imp impact. I don't know. I just, I just really like this look. And yeah, once we have this, we can play around with a lot of things here. But first, I do want to connect it so that we see what it looks like. Connect it here. All right, again, to move this, we can also just grab the text, select the text, you know, make this really close here. And then we grab it, grab the text and move it here. There we go. All right, and then we just need to go for the size and everything here and go the size and we can make it smaller maybe the h anchor you should see it underneath here i'll just uh turn my overlay off there we go so that we see everything here and you could also change the anchor so it sits right on the anchor there and then we can adjust it here depends what you want to block block off of these I like to have it a little bit higher. I don't want to see anything in the background there. So then we just make it a little bigger. Uh, his name is fairly large already. So maybe like this. And yeah, now we start to uh, change the text a little bit. We go to the transform and shading. Go to the sh We go to the shading and then we can select elements. This is the first element, which is just the writing. Um, over here, we can go to color. And on top of color, there is solid. We can, again, change it to a gradient. And here we see how it's mapped. So if we turn on the mapping angle, you see how it affects every little letter. Um, I think it's nice if it's from the bottom a little darker, like so maybe. And then we can also see, you know, like, adjust this a little bit of how much and how strong something is 
or where it is. I like to make this a little gray. It doesn't need to be as dark down the bottom. Uh, the top is nice if it's completely white though. Like this, okay. And then well, what I like to do at least is go select element and go on two and then click on enable and it gives you a red outline at first. But you can again, you know, change it to just white, hit okay. And then give it like a bigger thickness or something. However you see fit, you can adjust this again. Whatever you think makes it stand out the most and not too crazy. Because now zooming out and looking at it, I'm like, ooh, this is actually a little bit big. So maybe we should make it a little bit smaller. And then maybe the tracking also, like we could just do, make it a little bit go more apart. But this is what you can play around with and change to your liking. Um, one more thing that I like to do here is actually again grab another background and then grab another mask but now you know how this works if i click on here and hit one you see how it affects it right so now we grab the rectangle and we bring the rectangle behind the name then i like to grab the background node the the square hit this square and all of a sudden everything jumps around but bear with me um I just need to have a look at this really quickly. We undo these two things, grab the background, put the background on the yellow and put the text on the green. As we know, this makes the yellow line is always the background and puts the text on top. Now we go back to the rectangle and we can zoom in a little bit and you know, we adjust it just to be behind we adjust it just to be behind the name and then this is like really fiddly but just just adjust it to be behind the name like so just a little bit and then we are still selected on the rectangle we just give it a soft edge just a little bit of a soft edge not too much we don't want it to affect the little plates too much and yeah this is like working with a little bit of text a little bit of a layer and then you can see how this all works out. Okay. okay, this is all we did there, but now we wanna have this like little shing. I hope you know what I mean by shing. This little light thing go over his name and we will have to animate that. And this is what we're gonna do with keyframes. And yeah, let's jump right into it. All right, for this now, uh, we can have my camera back on because it's not blocking anything. What we will do for this it's also kind of fairly simple, I would say. Um, we need, again, our favorite, most favorite node is the background node. We grab a background node. And again, our second favorite node, we grab a rectangle node, okay? And then what we will do here is make this white, beautiful white. And the rectangle, let's have a look at it. We see it in our inspector here let's bring we need to bring it down here anyways and then we're going to change the angle a little bit like so let's just view this on the one here select this again make it a little smaller now we can also again adjust it here like so give it a little bit of a soft edge because the soft edge later will make it look like this shine thing and then we grab this, attach it to this square again, this background to the square, grab the merge node and bring it over here. And now you see this like big light thing going through. We go to the operator node of the merge node. So merge eight, we go over here, operator and put it atop, poof. Now it's atop of Pongo. And now if we go back to the rectangle, and move the rectangle around, you see how it gives it a little bit of this look. But I, I don't like this look too much. Uh, maybe it's a bit too soft. You can play around with it a little bit until you find your sweet spot that you really like. Maybe like so. And then I will come through, just affect the writing. And now we can animate it the way we want. 
we need to know where we want to have this. You know, if it's like a really simple one, ours is now 30 seconds. Um, so we can just find a spot where we think we want to have it animated. And maybe this is all in uh, frames. So this is 50 frames, 100 frames, 60 frames a second means at 60 frames, one second passes, right? So now if we go to, um, let's go 300 and we work with keyframes here. So just look on the right hand side at the inspector. When I move this, what changes? And it is the center, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit a keyframe here on the center and we go over to maybe 500 and we move this over and you see there's another keyframe and now if we click through this we see it over the time it will move because at 300 we have a keyframe on the left hand side and 500 we have one on the right hand side and this thing needs to move and we masked it at top on the writing so if we now go back to the edit page and then grab our clip that we just created and drag it in here now we see it here we can go back into fusion click on the rectangle go to where the keyframe is go back to the edit page and now we can you know play it back it first needs to render a little bit and now we see how the light goes through there if it's not fast enough to you guys you know you can always adjust it a little bit um by that i mean you know we go back into fusion it's like okay this wasn't fast enough for me like you can also calculate the frames so if you want to want to move within one second you would go 360 if you think one two it should be done then it's 120 so we would put it here and then we grab this bring it all the way to the edge already we just created another keyframe as we can see here and now it moves quicker through it okay so if we go back to the edit page now it should be way quicker in the movement through it and that is how you make this little kind of shiny effect again guys play around with it as much as you want uh, that's the nice beauty of these things here we can go into the background we can change the color we can change so many things here and yeah I think it's just awesome what you can do with it just by playing around in a little bit. I will now adjust a little bit more of the shadowy things and hopefully uh, change it to my liking. And yeah, we'll show you that in a sec. All right, I now made this uh, overlay a little bit better. Down the bottom left, you see it. It's a little bit slower. I added a little bit of a white smoke in there and the blue smoke. I'll now explain to you what exactly I did, um, but I was just really playing around a little bit more with the settings. And then I hope that, uh, yeah, that makes sense to you. And you can reproduce that yourself by just uh, following the steps and then what you've learned, how the merge node works, etc. You know, just add something here, change something there, and then you will figure out things more and more. And I hope that this will help you. All right. So we just go back in here for once, go for fusion. And you see, uh, if you paid attention, I added another, like I copied this node tree here. That was uh, the blue smoke. I put it over here. And then I went into the background, made this one white. And I also changed some of these things around so that it's not exactly the same smoke. And I also overall changed the speed of the seeth or sedi or whatever that is right down to eight, uh, 0 0.088 because then it doesn't move as quick and it looks a little bit more smoky. Um, yeah, one other thing. Uh, that you may notice is that there's now a yellow one going down and this one's green. This is just because I wanted the the white smoke to be in the background. As you know, yellow is the background and green means it gets put on top. Uh, a problem that may happen um, if you have the media in node at the very beginning, um, that then also means that the media in node, so this the gameplay that we watch will be on top of it so you won't see the white smoke that's why i added a background node to the very front here and i turned down the alpha so if i put the alpha up you will see it becomes black we turn it down and then i put the media in node at the very end as the yellow thing because it will be the background but 
uh, just for us to see again what it would look like in game. But before we get to the exporting, if you guys really like this tutorial or are interested in more, please write down in the comments below and let me know what you want to see next because this is just the smoke thing. If you want to see the fire one or how the fireball gets spit out by the, the Dracoda one or the lightning goes through and, you know, time certain things, uh, write in the comments down below and I will show you how to animate these things. Uh, really appreciate you guys uh, sticking around until now because we get to the export now, which is one of the most important things, I guess, uh, for uh, you being able to use this game, uh, this overlay, because if you export it now, you will have, uh, yeah, Joe, well, plain because that's what you would export. So what we need to do, the media in, we need to disconnect the media in. We don't see anything, but don't worry. Um, we can drag this down a little bit. From the last merge, before the media in, if you move the media in all the way to the back, you grab this last one and you drag it all the way over here. All right. And we connect that as the yellow. And now we just have our animation here. Again, um, if you want to have the background and stuff in there, you go to our merge background node and put the blend in. Then we have this little black thingy there. And we can take it out. In, out. Again, for original Pongo, he doesn't want to have this in. But if you wanted to have this in and you also want to have the white smoke around, then you would need to figure out a different way of um, layering it. A good way to do this could be that you take this, this stuff and put it all the way to the end as well as a background node and the other stuff in the front. There's different ways of achieving this. But uh, I wasn't sure whether or not I want to have the white in there. Uh, so it ended up being this way again here as well you can have the blend uh, blend this one in and then you will have all of your you know marked fields that you had the frames etc um, this is all with the blending of these nodes when you go blend in and out you always blend in and out the green so just so you know now we blend out again the background here and we have this little uh, blue white ish thing that goes on here and yeah coming to the export now we go on deliver uh, we are here you you remember on our timeline we just have this one clip and this is what it looks like here has a back black background it's a 1920 by 1080 uh, as you see here as well so depending on what resolution you stream at this would now fit perfectly on top you just uh, plug it in and it's done and yeah, one thing that we need to do now is go to QuickTime, GoPro Cineform, RGB 16-bit, and then you need to export the alpha. If you don't export the alpha, it will stay black, okay? Once you've done that, you can export it. We need to find a new, new thing. So we go for Browse. Uh-oh. <laughs> go for Browse. edits four and we're going to go new and we're going to call a OGP double click and then we're going to write uh, OGP no border overlay we have this there right now and when we have done that um, we go to render add to render queue and then we click render. All right, it's all rendered. Now I'm going to grab, because I'm streaming right now live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash introduce. This is all live right now. I'm going to grab this over here. This is my Streamlabs. Just, I'm in performance mode because otherwise everything would explode. And now what we will do is you need to go to your sources, click on plus. And then you go to media source. As you see, it has MOV in here. It's even better if you convert this to a WebM because then your computer doesn't have to calculate as much when it works with it. So now what we do, or like render as much so you don't drop as many frames, we go to add source. Um, we're going to add a new one. We're going to call it OGP. OGP. Add source. We go to browse for it and then there should be OGP, OGP overlay, open. And now you see it here, it's already wibbling wobbling. 
and it's all black but that's okay it should be okay at least we're going to click on loop we're going to click on done ogp is now at the very top and if i'm not mistaken you guys should see it right now if you have it on loop it just uh, repeats itself and repeats itself if you work with gradients make sure that at the very beginning and at the very end the gradient is at the same position because otherwise people will notice that there is a little jump so always make sure that at the very end it's everything the same with this kind of stuff it shouldn't be too noticeable because it's like all flowy and and going around and i didn't change too many things so this one would just run and run and run but yeah um this is how it works and this is how it's being done so yeah uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new or something useful out of it. If you have any questions, you know, write them down below. I will read them. I will reply. And also we can make a new video uh, on things that you're interested in. Okay. So please like and subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. And yeah, we will get into more of this kind of stuff. If you want to see the fireball, or if you want to see me review some of your gameplay, all of that beautiful stuff, write it down below. And we will find a solution for that, okay? Thank you guys so much. Uh, again, if you want to see this live, come by Twitch. Uh, and uh, I'll see you there. All right. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.